Hello, welcome, welcome back. If you are returning to my channel, hi, my name is Julie. And today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, people pleasing. Well, it's not so much my favorite as it's a subject that I know intimately well because I am one of the world's worst people pleasers and it's gotta stop. It's stopping today. So maybe this is something that you can relate to as well. If you're new here, hello, thank you so much for being here and spending time with me. I really hope that you will get something out of this episode and some food for thought, and this will improve your life because isn't that what we should all be aiming for? I have three kids, so I'm a mom and I'm an occupational therapist. I coach moms. I do, I do those kinds of things. And I'm also a chronic people pleaser and that needs to stop now. I am 40 years old, 40, what? so old no it's not and I only say this to tell you that it's taken me a long time to get to this point I probably will always be on the struggle bus of people pleasing I do believe that we all have an element of it in us but isn't it always refreshing when you meet someone that just doesn't give a damn about anybody else right or what anyone else thinks isn't that so refreshing when you meet someone that you know, it's just respectfully themselves. Obviously you do get the obnoxious people that are like, they take it to the absolute extreme. I'm not trying to get evicted from the tribe over here, but I just feel like we could all use a little dose of like, I can't control what you think and I don't care what you think. We could all do that a little bit more. So I'm here to remind myself and to remind any of you that might be struggling with it, that people pleasing <laughs> is an illness that we need to recover from. So. You know, I do want to caveat this by saying that I think this is a universal problem that people struggle with. And I think we are wired to want to please people. And that's fine. Like we are social creatures. We need each other. Heaven knows we need more help uh, from other people sometimes. But it, we take it to the extremes. And with social media and the fact that there's like a digital print of what you've been up to and what you've been doing. Mm, man, I just... You know, every time that I have done something disingenuous, and what I mean by that is I've said yes to something that I didn't really want to do, or I've gone to an event because I feel guilted into it. I feel shame around it. Like, that's not me. That's not me showing up authentically. I don't really have a good time when I go and do that. And there's a balance, you know, so I want to get into that a little bit more. I feel like I'm in the phase of life and I've spoken about this extensively on this podcast where I just, you know, I don't have excessive time to be wasting on social events specifically or people that we that I don't vibe with. And, and I want this to come across in the way it's intended. I'm not trying to be so stuck up that I can't hang with everybody, you know, like th there is a balance of going to events, like say for example, school events. So now the school year is in full swing. We have a lot of events to go to, or there are a lot of opportunities to go to events. And you're going to find that it's going to seem like the same people are going to the events over and over or would go to those events. But probably if you had to look at it like statistically and scientifically, people are kind of picking and choosing which events suit their lifestyles. And that's fine. That's why there's so many of them, because if you miss one, there'll be another opportunity. Uh, and especially if you're integrated into a community in the long haul, like this whole thing will come around again. You know, they'll be back to school night next year. There'll be parents night out next year again if if it doesn't work out for you now and so what i really try and separate when i'm dis discerning whether i can attend something or not uh, and it's not because i'm immediately busy with something else like i physically could go right but i don't want to am i going because i feel the pressure from other people like what will other people say or am i going out of service like a school thing i'm going to support the school might not be my first choice of activity. You know, when we go to these fundraising events or these dinners, look, I wouldn't normally go to these things, but I'll do it maybe every other year so that I'm showing up for my kids and I'm, you know, I'm supporting the school community. But when you're going there because you're worried what people will think if you don't go or that you're going to miss out FOMO, you know, big FOMO person over here, or, you know, you're just going because you feel guilted to do it, like that's not the right thing to go. You're not bringing the right energy when you go to an event like that. And then what you really have to consider, 
is that what is this costing you? I do think we are so busy nowadays and some of us may be busier than others, but there's a lot that we're balancing. You know, women in the United States, over 75% of them are in the workforce, which means that they are juggling children and work, which I've done that. It is not easy. You know, you need a whole fleet of support in order to, to carry that off. And I bet you there's still going to be an element of like, I'm not present enough for my kids or I'm not paying attention enough at work or I'm not promoting, I'm not getting promoted enough at work. I'm not doing a good job. I'm not doing as good of a job as I did before children. Like you're never going to, it's never going to be perfect. All's to say people are stressed out and doing a lot of things and are very busy. Never mind your health. Like when are you supposed to find time to work out and go to therapy and meditate and do all the things. And then your social life on top of that, we're all busy. And so I think there's just a lot of events that are happening all the time and you should not put the pressure on yourself to do everything. You really need to cherry pick what is going to work for you. And I think for me, I always feel this guilt of saying no and what I perceive to be as letting people down. Whereas in reality, if I was counseling a friend about this, I would say something like, you don't know what they're thinking. You have no idea whether they're judging you or not. Uh, They might be relieved that you said no. That means they can say no as well. I had that exact situation happen to me recently. Uh, My friend and I were going to go to a school book club. And, you know, you say yes to these things two weeks in advance or three weeks in advance, not in the moment. And it came closer to that. And something was going on with me where I don't know what had happened. I think I'd been on my own a lot, like parenting on my own, We'd had a lot going on. I've mentioned before we were renovating our house. I don't know what had happened there. We'd had like a lot of meetings and like making decisions. I don't know if someone had been sick, but by the time this this event rolled around, when I looked to see how long it would take me to get there and the time that it was, it was like at 6.30, which is like terrible time for me uh, in this stage of life, not forever. I was just like, no, I'm not going to drive over 30 minutes for something that's an hour long. I, I just... I would love to be there in theory. Like I love talking about books. It's a very important book. I want to support the school. I just cannot. And I told my friend this and she was like, yep, okay, well, I don't think I can go either for whatever her reason was. You know, like I gave her permission because had I gone, I think she would have felt worse (laughs) and I wasn't going to go either way. Like I just couldn't. It was just something that I just couldn't do. And I felt like this is a good, this is a good way for me to step into my power of saying no and, and feel okay. And you know, there was so many people going to this event. No one's going to notice whether I'm there or not. Uh, and there was actually, as it, as it turned out, there were subsequent events for the same book that I could have gone to if I really wanted to. So it's just a tough season of life that I think at least I find myself in right now having to get a babysitter for things, um, doing a lot on my own, just having lots of activities for the kids and school commitments that we've already made. I don't feel like I can say yes to all of these things, but sometimes there are things that come up that I know I don't want to do, but I physically could do them. Like I have the time in theory, I could make the time in theory, but I just don't want to do them. And how do I dissociate myself from just doing it out of guilt. Like I shouldn't do it out of guilt. I know the difference when I have this like pit in my stomach of, I don't really want to go to that versus I'm excited to meet you for coffee and I'm going to set it up and I'm going to initiate. That's a different energy, you know, and it's quality over quantity at this stage of my life. It's a different conversation when you're single and you're, you know, maybe in your twenties and like you have a lot of time ahead and you, you need to get out there and meet people and I do too. I need to make friends. I moved to a new city. I don't have a lot of friends here. I need to I need to invest in friendship and relationship. And the irony of this whole thing is that I made a podcast video or made a video a few a few weeks ago talking about how much fun I had on a retreat that I went to and like how I've forgotten how to have fun. So here I am like contradicting myself, but there's difference. I can I can make plans for the fun and I can also say no to the things that I'm just doing out of guilt if you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's nuanced, it's subtle, and it's different for everybody. But I don't want my children to grow up in this people-pleasing spiral that I am in. You know, I, I feel like 
I have to have learned it from somewhere. And I think a lot of it is societal and cultural, especially being a woman. Like there's some element of people pleasing that I think haunts women more than men. But men, if, if anyone's watching this as a man, you let me know. But I just don't think my husband deals with this kind of stuff. Like he makes a decision and moves on. He doesn't lament. I keep on using that word, but he doesn't dwell uh, on these decisions. Maybe he's just too busy to, but I just think personality wise, he doesn't dwell on these things. He moves on and he gets on with the next thing of which there are many, many other things. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to know which opportunities, like you could always meet someone really amazing at, at, at an event. You know, I'm not looking to date anybody, but I could meet a mom friend that becomes my friend for life. You know, these are events when you go to these things and you invest time into them, you're investing time into relationships. But also, just as easily, it could be a total dud. And now, what does it cost you to go to something that you didn't want to go to in the first place? It's a tough thing. I mean, I clearly don't have this all worked out. But I just wanted to make this episode to give you permission. If you're in a stage of life now where you need to prioritize your family and your health, perhaps. That's kind of where I feel I'm at. Where I just don't have the capacity to have this raging social life right now. I know it will come. Like, I know it will come. I see I see friends with kids that are older than, you know, considerably older than my youngest child, like as old as my oldest child. And I'm like, when she is that age, we will be able to do that again, you know? And it's going to happen. It's cyclical. It's like the, re- it's like the shops. Like they're always going to bring out Halloween decor in August. They're always going to bring out Christmas in September, you know, in October. Um, it's like that. It's cyclical. Like if you, if you quote unquote miss this opportunity, there will be other ones. And perhaps you just weren't supposed to be at that party that day, or you just weren't supposed to attend that event because what is it costing you? For me, sleep. It's costing me sleep. Definitely. It's costing me mental energy and bandwidth it's costing me my mood and just that, you know, being able to manage my life. I, I've just got to the point now where I am choosing calm over chaos and quality over quantity. I don't need to, you know, subscribe myself to some imaginary tally booth, toll booth, no, tally in the sky of like, Julie attended this many things this month or she went on this many trips this year or I don't need to do that. That's keeping up with the Joneses. Not here for that because I, I, that's just not worth it to me. I've, I've gone in and I've done that in and out throughout my life and it, it's just not, it's not worth it. And that's why I tell you how old I am because like it's taken me this many years and decades to get to this point where I feel comfortable being able to pick and choose what, what kind of events I go to. And also recognizing that other people do that too. You know, they don't go to every single event or they will RSVP and then something will come up as is life and they're unable to attend. That's okay. And your real friends of which I don't know if you can have 25 of them, like that's a lot of people to keep up with. If you've got three really close friends, I feel like you're winning in life. If you can really like show up for them in the way that you want to as a friend, that's incredible. That's amazing. Um, but those real close friends and family, they will understand and they will support you. And if you communicate to them that you just don't have the bandwidth right now and you just have to prioritize laying low for now, I think they will understand. And if they don't, then that's saying more about them than it is about you. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention if you are struggling with this or have struggled with people pleasing in the past that you don't need to. You can say no right now and you can discern what things are worth your time and what things you're really going to show up for authentically and be yourself and really bring the right vibes and what things are just for show. What are you doing out of guilt and shame? One last thing that I'll leave you with is I think when you understand your values as a person and as a family unit, saying no to things becomes a lot easier. I remember watching a video a long time ago or reading something about a family that, for example, only they would not allow their children to go out with friends on a Friday night because Friday was family night. And that was a value that they had established. Well, family is a value that they had established within their family, uh, prioritizing that and prioritizing time for family. And they happen to choose a Friday evening as the time that they all got together. Whether that's still the case as their kids have gotten older, I have no idea. But it just struck me as like, wow, I can, 
I can make this choice for my family. My husband and I can decide together and we can determine what we need to be able, what we can handle, you know, that's worth, that's worth us being there for because it's not worth it going there to an event or doing something that you don't want to be at, being miserable, being the grouch of the party. And then, you know, like going home and being like, I can never get those last three hours back of my life. And those are very precious. I need to sleep. I have young children, you know, I need to be calm and controlled and kind towards them. And when I'm underslept and overstressed, I'm not a pleasant person to be around, you know, and I feel like, you know, this, this happens far too often. Or, you know, if, if you, uh, kind of view a Sunday as like a family day. You just don't do certain things on those days. And then it's a lot easier to say no. Like maybe you don't attend other people's birthday parties on those days, or you don't host your own birthday parties on a Sunday, or you don't do sporting events on a Sunday because that's a family day. You know, that's a sacred day to you. It doesn't really matter. It's just establishing your family values and knowing who you are. Like one of my highest values is living in authenticity and really being brave enough, especially in a public forum like this online. Like here I am sitting here in my bedroom, just like spilling my heart out, but being brave enough and confident enough to be who I am and not care what other people think. Like if you have a problem with that, you don't, we don't need to be friends. We don't need to hang out. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm all fired up about this topic, as you can tell. And I want you to know that you can be too, if you want. And uh, you're ultimately in charge of your experience on this earth and your life and what you, how you want to live it. And I think that's really important. Like don't do things disingenuously for other people. Do things for other people and be kind and generous, 100%. Be kind spirited and show up with vibrant, welcoming, friendly energy definitely but don't go there out of guilt like no one needs that no one needs your guilt anyway all right i'm gonna i'm gonna stop with this because it's gonna it's gonna get out it's gonna get out of control um but clearly this is something that is, is tough for me to deal with and reconcile and i'm a work in progress and that's okay that's what we're here to do we're here to learn our lessons on this planet uh and that's why things keep showing up for us until we really step into our own and and learn and use our values to guide how we want to live. But yeah. All right. Uh, I hope you're all having a beautiful day. I can't wait to hang out with you again. Let me know in the comments if any of this resonated with you and I will see you soon. Bye.